have Justin Martin here to talk to us about the Tailgate Concert Series. And later on, we'll talk to Elizabeth for the Mississippi Dance Festival. But right now, we're going to kick things off with Brian Pagan. Hi, thank you for coming. Hi, Anna. Thanks for having me. All right, and today you're here to talk to us about Volunteer Hattiesburg. So tell me a little bit about that. Basically, Volunteer Hattiesburg is an organization that collaborates with nonprofit organizations in the area and volunteers in the area so that we can get volunteers to the community service events that they care most about. Okay, and tell us about the upcoming events that you have going on commemorating 9-11. Well, Volunteer Hattiesburg has planned a few events for 9-11. It's the 9-11 National Day of Service. Mm -hmm. And pretty much we have the the city hosts an annual ceremony on the 11th, that's Thursday, and that'll begin at 8.40. Um, we'll be helping out with that. We'll provide volunteers to set up the chairs mm -hmm. and then observe the ceremony and then tear down and help serve <coughs> refreshments afterwards. But getting ready for the ceremony, the first responders that 9-11 commemorates, uh, they need clean vehicles. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, a requirement for a big thing like that. Mm -hmm. So Volunteer Hattiesburg um, reached out to them and we collaborated with them and we said, we'll provide the manpower to wash your vehicles for this. So what we're doing is we're doing a car wash for the police department on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. That's from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the police station, which is 701 James Street. And we're doing a fire truck wash from 4 to 6 p.m. the following Wednesday and that's at 810 North Main Street and uh, that'll require about 50 volunteers so we're really hoping people show up for that one and then of course we'll be helping out with the ceremony and we'll get there about 7:30 a.m. Okay, sounds great. Well how do you get volunteers plugged in? How can they volunteer? Well I have, um, I have, we have a few avenues that they can go to. Mm -hmm. Our website is probably the best place for them to go. Mm -hmm. VolunteerHattiesburg.org is where they can go and see all these opportunities, the address, the time, the activities that they'll be doing, any required mm -hmm. clothing or like bring water or clothes to shoes. All that information can be found on our website and that's also where people can go to register. Registration is free. Um, of course it's all nonprofit, so mm -hmm. you're never you know, going to be asked for money or charged for anything of like course. that. Um, we also have a booth that we host every week at the Hattiesburg Farmer's Market okay. at Town Square Park to give kind of a physical presence that's not just a website. Mm -hmm. And we promote a different partner agency each week there. So each week we're there, we have a representative, usually just the director, executive mm -hmm. director, or volunteer with one of our different 32 partner nonprofit agencies that we work with. Okay, 32 nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. So instead of me, like, just to say I wanted to volunteer in the city of Hattiesburg, instead of me just, oh, well, I don't know what to do, or I don't know which program to pick, or I don't know how to contact a particular program, mm -hmm. Volunteer Hattiesburg is the place I need to, you know, go to because they facilitate all these great opportunities to volunteer in the city. That's right. Uh, if you were to just say, oh, I want to volunteer, and you know mm -hmm. nothing about it, you've never done it before, uh, we're excited that you're interested in volunteering, mm -hmm. first of all. Of um, if you were to Google volunteering in Hattiesburg, mm -hmm. Volunteer Hattiesburg is the first hit that shows up, and it's a great place to go because it lists all the different opportunities awesome. that are out there. And having 32 partner agencies, there's bound to be at least a few that you've maybe never heard of before, mm -hmm. and you might find something that really resonates with you that you say oh this is a cause that I really care about and end up you know becoming more of a part of that organization than you might have thought. Definitely because I always run into organizations on campus or off campus or community groups that just want to help the community and volunteer their time and mm -hmm. they don't know where to start so this is a great opportunity for them to get plugged in and make the difference that they want to make. So tell me about a few of the organizations that you guys partner with a few of the nonprofits. Well, having so many nonprofits, it mm -hmm. gives us a wide variety of activities that you can do. So we have mentoring programs with Big Brothers Big Sisters, Dream of Hattiesburg, the Osceola McCarty Youth Development Center, mm -hmm. um, homelessness. You can work with Fieldhouse for the homeless. That's that organization. Mm -hmm. 
of course, food pantries and soup kitchens. Christian Services has a soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. Edward Street Fellowship has a food pantry. Uh, housing, of course, Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. R3SM is an organization unique to Hattiesburg, and they do long-term disaster recovery. So, oh, wow. for houses that were hit by storms in low-income areas, they help mm -hmm. them out. And then you have like health and the animal shelter. Um, of course, there are those things out there as well. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Just tell me about what an organization like this means to the city of Hattiesburg. I mean, we've been hit by a tornado. Uh, I think this will be the two year anniversary coming up next year. And we just suffered a few different occurrences. There's poverty in this city, just like other cities. Tell me how great Volunteer Hattiesburg benefits this community. Volunteer Hattiesburg helps get the passionate people who care a lot about their community to the places where they're needed the most. So instead of saying, oh, there's trash on the side of the road, well, great, yes, let's pick that up. But if you have some talents or skills, we can apply those and make the biggest impact. And that's really what Volunteer Hattiesburg is about, is taking the same resources and affecting the greatest change for our community. Definitely, definitely. Tell me again about the 9-11 programs coming up. Well, there are three days, Tuesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So that's the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th. Mm -hmm. And the times are on the 9th, it starts at 9 a.m. at the police station, which is mm -hmm. 701 James Street. On the 10th, we begin at 4 p.m. and that's at 810 North Main Street for the fire truck wash. And on the 11th, helping out with the memorial ceremony, it's at the 9-11 memorial across the street from the fire station. And that begins at 7.30 a.m. Okay, well, it sounds great. Well, if people need to contact you, how can they do that? Uh, we have contact information on our website, of course, at mm -hmm. volunteerhattiesburg.org. Mm -hmm. You can email me at brian, B-R-I-A-N, dot Payden, P-A-D-E-N, at volunteerhattiesburg.org. Or you can call us at 601-450-0025. Let's keep things moving right along with show veteran Elizabeth Lentz Hill from the dance department. Thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Tell me a little bit about the Mississippi Dance Festival. The Mississippi Dance Festival is a dance festival for 7th through 12th graders and their dance educators, their teachers. Mm -hmm. um, my colleague Julie Hammond White and I started the festival about three years ago because we wanted a place where these young dancers could come and get together, take great classes, get to see each other, and then we also really wanted their dance teachers to be fed, to have a place where they get to continue to learn as well. Okay, sounds amazing. Well, tell me about the the group. Is this the first time this event has happened? It's the third year that we've done it, and it's kind of grown each year. I think we're really hitting a good stride right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to have about 75 student participants, those 7th through 12th graders, and then about 10 dance educators. And the people come from all around Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. Last year we wow. had some people from Florida and things. Um, most of them are students that are dancing in um, high school or middle school programs. Some of mm -hmm. them come from dance studios. Mm -hmm. Some of the programs are special performing arts schools, like APAC, Power APAC Performance Group in, um, Performance School, excuse me, in Jackson, or Mississippi School for the mm -hmm. Arts. And then some of them are just regular old middle schools and high schools that happen to have dance programs. And then, as I said, we do get a few studios participating, but we haven't focused on that that mm -hmm. pool of um, 7th through 12th graders as much. Yes, that um, Performance Arts Center in Jackson you speak of, I'm from Jackson, and we had the program in my high school. Shout out to Merle. But <laughs> anyways, um, tell me about some of the dancers in the program. It's really, um, it's really wonderful. The students who come are excited to be learning, excited to be getting to dance somewhere different. Yeah. Um, you know, the middle schoolers, this might be the first time that they have been out of their state or away from their hometown right. in order to participate in a dance festival. So we want to create this, um, we really want to create a community. We really want these dancers, mm -hmm. these young dancers, the next generation of dance artists, mm -hmm. I like to say, for them um, to get to know each other and to get to really 
take good classes, but then see that they're not alone and see that everyone's better when they're working together. So some of our students participating will be the first time this mm -hmm. year, and some of them will have been for the last three years. And so they kind of come with that sense of being veterans mm -hmm. and understanding and showing the other ones what's going on and stuff. And then it's also really fun um, because not only is the, are those participants so special, but we also have USM dance students who will act as interns for the festival. Oh, wow. So they will be around during the festival. They'll be, you know, helping do the administrative things, but they um, might also be uh, in watching some of the classes mm -hmm. or responding to the students' choreography that they do in the course of the festival. So the participants for the Mississippi Dance Festival um, get to see what collegiate dancers are like. The collegiate dancers get to be reminded of where they came from, and also many of them are doing our dance licensure track, and so they are preparing to go out and become the dance educators wow. for these middle and high school students. Very so it's just cool. this really beautiful loop of um, creating community. Mm -hmm. And then this year we're trying to also really focus not only in the community of the uh, Mississippi Dance Festival participants and USM, but our larger Hattiesburg community as well. Mm -hmm. Our first event on Friday night will be down at 206 Front Street Restaurant, where the students will have, um, the participants will have dinner and then get to hang out around downtown. Mm -hmm. Shops are staying open a little late so that that can happen. Wow. And then they're going to take a social dance class. They'll come back and learn to swing dance and salsa dance and everything on Friday night to kind of kick everything off. That sounds very cool. Tell me about some of the great things that have came from this program in past years. Well, in addition to just the, I mean, the first thing that pops in my head are the faces of the 7th mm -hmm. through 12th graders that have done this, right? Um, and just them having a, a wonderful time. It's also fun at the beginning of the school year for them to have this special treat mm -hmm. to go away and dance, and then they get to go back and be all excited and reinvigorated <laughs> by what they've done. Um, but really one of the other great things that has happened is we have been able to offer continuing education units, CEUs, mm -hmm. for the professional dance educators. Um, most teachers in licensure programs uh, around you know, the United States have to do some kind of professional development mm -hmm. yearly, and they have to earn a certain number of credits to keep their teaching certificate alive. Okay. Um, last year we began this, and this year we're continuing to offer these CEUs for the dance educators, and we're one of the few, and I believe the only place in our kind of Gulf South region where these dance educators can get CEUs specifically in dance education. What? So they can go and take professional general uh, professional development classes that with math teachers and English mm -hmm. teachers that are about classroom management mm -hmm. or new ways to write assessment tools. Mm -hmm. But here they're going to have workshops on technology and new apps that are available for dance educators. Wow. Um, they're going to do a session with our guest artist Rhonda Sonoto. Rhonda will be here teaching jazz, but she's going to do a session specifically for them about how to teach jazz in the K through 12 school system, how to tie it into dance history, how to um, differentiate, make different levels of combinations to keep the students interested, wow. how to make it over a curriculum, that kind of thing. So uh, we've done a lot to really try to tailor to what the needs of the dance educators in our region are. Definitely, I can tell. What a great opportunity for the city and for dancers, young dancers, so vibrant and you know, just trying to have an outlet for that creative passion that they have. That's such a great thing for this campus and what better place to do it than right here at our wonderful dance department. Just um, tell me a little bit about the um, program in more detail, just about what kind of styles of mm -hmm. dancing. Mm -hmm. So the students will come, I keep saying the students, the participants, because mm -hmm. they're dance educators <laughs> too, um, will come on Friday night and as I mentioned we kind of have social fun night downtown and then Saturday morning they get up we start bright and early mm -hmm. they'll have four sessions of classes they'll take a uh, ballet class they'll take a jazz class with our guest artist uh, who I mentioned is coming in from Seattle in the afternoon they'll do a conditioning class so like a Pilates style type okay. class and then they'll have a choreography class mm -hmm. And later on that night, on Saturday night at 7 o'clock, we have the Mississippi Dance Festival concert. And this is a concert of professional dancers mm -hmm. from around our area. Um, 
who are invited to perform mm -hmm. to kind of inspire the students and see what mm -hmm. you can do. If you want to say you want to be a professional dancer, mm -hmm. it can be kind of hard if you live in small town Mississippi to say, I want to be a mm -hmm. professional dancer, but I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to give students an example exactly. of what they can do. Awesome. So on that concert on Saturday night, we'll have the professional dancers, and then we also each year feature a high school group. This year we have a piece of student choreography by a young man in uh, Davidson High School from mm -hmm. Mobile, Alabama. So his his duet, Letting Go, will be part of that concert mm -hmm. at night. Awesome. And then afterwards, we started this last year and it was a huge success for bringing it back. Mm -hmm. After that festival concert, the participants are given the opportunity to have an improvisation jam. Wow. So they get to sit and watch professional dance and then they get to get up and dance. And Very that cool. concert is open to everyone, it's open to the public. Then Sunday we have uh, some discussions in the morning that are open to the public about the role of jazz dance in American mm -hmm. history and about the concert itself. So if people come and see the show on Saturday at 7, mm -hmm. then they can come back and talk to um, the artists at 9 o'clock in the morning and find out what they were thinking with their choreography. <laughs> right. And then in the afternoon the students will take a modern class. And the last thing of the whole festival is this kind of showing and sharing. Everybody showing choreography they uh -huh. did the day before dance combinations they're working on at home, that kind of stuff. So it should just be leaving on a great a great note of dance. Okay, and tell us about the date and time for that event one more time. Great, the whole festival starts on Friday night, uh -huh. this Friday, and goes until Sunday. Um, and the events that are open to the public are Saturday night at 7 o'clock, the Mississippi Dance Festival concert that's mm -hmm. held here on campus in the Dance Theater and Dance Building. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday morning, starting at 9, two public conversations okay. with professional dance artists. All right, well, thanks for coming. If people need to contact you, how can they do that? They can get in touch with the dance department mm -hmm. here at USM, look on the website there, mm -hmm. um, and also check on Facebook for the Mississippi Dance Festival. Now it's time to wrap things up with Maine Willie Green himself. Woo! Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I'm always here. I, mean, I know. If the, if, the, if the door's open, or even if it's not, I got a key. So, <laughs> I, you know, it's you it's here. my life. I live here. I basically, you know, I basically, I should uh, install a cot. You should. I uh, think get, so. a, get a shower going. Some executive bathroom privileges. Something, something like that. <laughs> but uh, at any rate. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit about USM's Tailgate Concert Series. Yes, the WUSM Tailgate Concert Series. We decided to do this um, starting. I, I guess in 2011 is when we really started doing it and um, it just seemed to be a way for us since we're so into music and we uh, hopefully the people that listen to the station are as into music as we are and so we would uh, uh, be able to offer some live music sort of a uh, pre-game pep rally stuff like that kill you know if you get in here you're through tailgating and whatnot it's still that one last thing to go hang out and do before you go into the into the stadium and um, uh, we it's been a lot of fun so far uh, uh, we have it's out there on Tent Centennial Green. It used to be where the Commons was. So if so, those of you old people like, like me who were here in the <laughs> '80s at some point, although I was just kind of uh, a people embryo when I was around in the '80s, I wasn't quite a person yet. Um, where the where the Commons used to be, the former location of the Commons, that's where Centennial Green is. Nice green space, although a water main busted under where we put our tents. Huh. So we're going to have to move our tent to a different place <laughs> for Saturday anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of what happens before every home game. Uh, we've got music here. Yes. Um, and this uh, this year we start off Saturday. That's our first home game. Mm -hmm. And we're playing Alcorn State. And uh, uh, we're starting with Grace and Caps and the Lost Cause Minstrels. We play at Minstrels. We play lots of Grace and Caps on the station. Yeah. Uh, big fan. He... Uh, as always does a really great live performance mm -hmm. and um he's going to be uh kicking it off which is going to be kicking it off strong and uh, that's going to start an hour before half i mean hour before kickoff uh so he'll start at 4 15 mm -hmm. and go until 5 30 gives you plenty of time 30 minutes you can get to the sta stadium get your seat get your cold drink you know mm -hmm. get your popcorn whatever yeah. it is before you before you do the football thing and uh, and whatnot so uh uh, definitely come out and see us for that. We've actually got a bunch of really good stuff. Uh, Wesley is going to be the uh, the game coming up on September the 20th. Oh. South Mount Crescent, September 27th. The Voodoo, Dr. Paul Lennon and uh, uh, Dr. Dr. E. e. Yeah, absolutely. Them. They are so great. It's yeah. going to be October 25th. Uh, the one I'm most excited about, I've got to say, Jerika Singleton, November oh. 8th. 
Um, you know, former USN basketball standout, mm -hmm. graduate from here, and just uh, mm -hmm. his record on the alligator is really good. Wow. And so I'm really, really looking forward to that one. And we got Ralph Nix and the Catfish Gospel uh, wrapping the whole thing up, and, and they're they're always great. That's February 29th. Uh, and if you've never seen them live, they're great. It's a, they're a, they're a, a a great band to see. Definitely. But uh, yeah, it's uh, you know for it's it's a I've got to be honest, it's a lot of extra work, uh -huh. but it's so worth it to see the music it's so worth mm -hmm. it to have you know it's it's exactly what I, envi what I envision it you get you know kids out there preteens out there playing football you know running around kicking mm -hmm. the ball like you know like everyone should be you know everyone gets fired up for football at the, right. at the, at the uh, tailgating and they get to go to run around mm -hmm. uh, it gives a place for uh, uh, families to sort of congregate and hang out and it's uh, there's good music around and um, a real sense of camaraderie, I think. I hope definitely. that's what I think. Anyway, <laughs> um, have, you, have you have you been out to one of the uh, you've been out to one of the shows? I have definitely. I saw OJ Maya so. Always a good show. Yeah. Always a good show with him. Yeah. Um, really great music this year. I mean, really great music every year. We always always try to bring you guys. Uh, we always like to say we play the best music ever recorded on the mm -hmm. air. And hopefully we can provide the best live music ever, you know, performed anyway. Uh -huh. when, when we've got a, when we've got our guest on there, and um, and this year is certainly a, a big strong one. I need to give a little shout out to some of the uh, supporters of the uh, Tugget Concert Series, uh, College of Arts and Letters here at USM. Could not do it without them. Fantastic people, and uh, uh, really fortunate to to have them on our side for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, I take here at Southern Mist, he, making sure all their computers work good, and say they are they're one of our good sponsors. Uh, Coca-Cola can I do it without Coca-Cola and the people there uh, Fairfield Inn and Suites they're real big supporters of us they've uh, always helped out with us uh, JMH Graphics mm -hmm. great shirts always yes indeed and uh, uh, the people at Southern Beverage and uh, Bud Light also a sponsor this year on the Tailgate Concert Series Okay, very cool. Yeah, it's really easy to do. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, what do I do? I don't really know how to how to do that. You know, I don't know how to mm -hmm. tailgate at USM. Well, it's fairly easy. Um, uh, if you go to West Memorial Drive, which is that's just right, mm -hmm. right there by College Hall, right. that little that little brick, uh, the little brick that that used to, it used to be a loop that went right in front of the Union, so everybody mm -hmm. would drive down there and uh, and uh, turn the radio up really loud so they make sure mm -hmm. everybody looked at them. <laughs> but then they paved it up and put the bricks over so you can't drive <laughs> through anymore. So that where you used to be able to drive out. Drop your stuff off there, and uh, park. Just there's there's parking open open parking within a quarter mile of there. Mm -hmm. uh, drop it off. Walk right down the brick path to Centennial Green on the left. We're gonna see us here. You'll see our tent there. You'll see the stage set up, and it's gonna be a a, a good time. And yeah, uh, definitely, definitely get ready to party with us for sure. Definitely, I'll be out there. You guys should definitely come out. It starts at four fifteen. Uh, four fifteen is when Grace is gonna is gonna start. Yeah, and mm -hmm. all the all the shows start. Um, they end a half hour before kickoff. kickoff to give to give people time to, to get to their seat and whatnot, mm -hmm. and uh, and all the concerts are seventy five minutes. So mm -hmm. if you just have to back up and back up a little bit from mm -hmm. that, and uh, depending on what the uh, what the kickoff time is, uh, look back an hour and a half before that, and uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much where you're at. Definitely. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys out there this Saturday, and thank you for coming, Mr. Willie Green. And for more information, you can go to our Southern Miss Today Facebook page. And that's all we have for today. As always, put in your requests at southernmissradio.com and listen in tomorrow because Beck O'Neill has a great show lined up for you. But that's all here today. But keep the dial right here. At so who's going to be on with Beck tomorrow? Who's going to be on with Beck tomorrow? <laughs> that's a great question. You're going to have to listen to find out. <laughs> Shows I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be me if I didn't put anybody, everybody on the spot. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm just. I'm the king of that. That's what I do. Definitely. Gotta keep everybody on their toes. Somebody has to do it. Uh, sure, of course. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for listening, you guys, and make sure you tune in tomorrow. I'd like to. Uh, can I sing some? Sure, you can sing us out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm. I'm I don't really know really what to sing. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to have a musical guest today, but uh, they, uh, they. Uh, Left us high and dry, but I guess, I guess it happens, you know. Yeah. If you're if you're not if you're not Jay Leno, or if you're not you know Jimmy Fallon, <laughs> like uh, we're gonna be on your show. <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever. <laughs> we might be on your show. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. You know. Either way. It's okay. We get the short end. Exactly. Of the always. Always. But you know, it's okay. It's, it's all right. right. We deal with it. Exactly. We move on. Exactly. That's when I get to come in and, and have fun and 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 freak you guys out. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> it is what it is. Well, but thanks. All right, I'll, I'll quit, John. 
All right, thanks. This is no, it's no longer fun for anybody listening. They're like, you know, shut him up, please, play something. <laughs> All right, fine. All right, keep the dial right here at Southern Miss today.